and indeed for 18-year-old Alan Dickens in midfield. This is his first home league game. He scored on his debut at Notts County. West Ham certainly got injury problems. Trevor Brookie and Billy Bond still out. Now they're joined by Neil Orr, Paul Goddard, and this morning by Frank Lampard, who's gone down with flu. Paul Allen will be at fullback today. Dickens in the midfield, and Francois van der Els moves up front. Spurs also have massive injury problems. Gary Mabbott, Graham Roberts, Tony Galvin and John Lacey. They're now joined by Mike Hazard, who injured a calf in training yesterday. George Mazen is drafted into the side, and Paul Price returns to the defence. The referee is Mark Scott from Nottingham, and this is his first game at Upton Park. So it's West Ham who get us away, then attacking the goal to our left in the claret and blue shirt. Spurs, of course, in white. West Ham fifth in the table, and Spurs are tenth. Phil Parks with his first clearance. Stewart. And Mazen. And the throw given to Tottenham. And Mazen will take it. for Tottenham, Mike came off his knee for Archibald, put it back for Hoddle, and Paul Allen trying to reach Van der Elst, and Dickens was in there as well, but here's Ricky Villa, and Houghton, and Brook away over on the far touchline, and uh, another throw for Tottenham, off Allen for another Tottenham throw. Brook once again, a quicker one. Finding Brooks this time. And Martin just shrugging it away for the corner now to Tottenham. So Tottenham's corner taken by Gary Brook. Easy afternoon here at Upton Park. Stewart trying to get it away, and West Ham just can't force the ball at the moment into the top and half of the field. Stewart, playing at left back this afternoon. Not he very closely shadowed by Mazen. Now Crooks. Not he in. Unfortunately for him, the ball goes straight to V. A hobble. Vander Elst, difficulty uh, balancing himself because the ball was caught on the breeze a little bit there, but he's got it between the legs of Perryman. And uh, Dickens very nearly getting a good shrewd ball through there. Vander Elst coming through and he's onside. Now what's going to happen? But he is underneath it. And uh, it goes over for the corner. And suddenly West Ham were in with a great scoring chance there. Vander Elst breaking free, the flag stayed down. Ball over Clements, but Potty couldn't quite get the jump. He was out jumped by O'Reilly, and Devonshire now takes the corner for West Ham. Martin and Gallagher have both come forward, and it's Martin who got that header there. V are now turning it for Hollow. And Pike was after him like a terrier. And Spurs again get a throw. hasn't taken off yet. Devonshire won't be happy with that pass. Cut out by Perriman. Archibald now to Gary Brook. It's again Perriman playing it for Archibald. And just wide of Parks' post. Archibald who scored twice when Spurs beat West Ham at White Hart Lane and it was a quickly taken shot and Archibald in fact hasn't scored since that afternoon in late November eight matches ago and Paul Price away for Tottenham back by Stewart now that won't uh, go far enough Archibald Stewart 
it's been fast look for the moment as they might put them into trouble, but Devonshire snaking his way through that Tottenham side. <laughs> what a lovely piece of play, and finding Van der Elst at the end of it, with Allen willing to go down the right wing for it. Van der Elst to continue it, with the ball eventually coming uh, off O'Reilly for a West Ham throw. So we've got 25 minutes of the first half now, and not a lot to be said for it. This time to West Ham. Mike wanting the Tottenham uh, two-man wall at least to get back a, another token yard or two. At the moment they're about four or five yards off the ball. And that's the art of compromise. The referee got Pike to take the ball back and the wall to go back as well. of Garth Crooks. Beautiful. Good shot. Now it has one. Marks well behind it. Hand defender for another Tottenham throw. Brooks. Now Hugh. It's Tottenham's free kick. Perryman will take it. Archibald. Hobble. Or oh, hit beautifully. Whip that shot there on the half volley by Glenn Hobble. I don't think Parks would have reached it, but fortunately for West Ham, it was just a yard or so outside. Hit superbly well. Here's Cotty breaking first again, but once again, O'Reilly with him. O'Reilly away towards Brooks. A nice little cushioned header there for Villa. And now Gary Brook with Hewton sprinting up outside him. This is Hewton. And Spurs have got a few forward. Still with Hewton. And across towards Garth Brooks. Nodded back there well. And Archibald and the shot was saved well by Brooks. Good header out from. Garth Brooks, some excellent work by Hewton, and this is where it very nearly paid off for Tottenham, with Brooks having played it back, and Archibald hitting it first time, but Clark second. Clark. Hewton back. Martin. In quick. Clark getting in quickly as well. And else couldn't pick it up. Ball Allen. Uh, Cotty off in pursuit of it. It hasn't. Close at hand, but a good ball by Cotty for Devonshire. Getting his shot in. And passed it away well by Clements. Good shot there by Devonshire. He scored one this season. Cotty played a little part in that by playing the ball for Devonshire. Hit it well. Tipped over with excellent timing. 
by Clemens. So it's West Ham's corner. Three minutes of the first half left now. Jeff Pike with it. And it's a slight problem for Spurs. Hugh slightly injured there, needing a little bit of Burke's attention, but a word or two from the referee at any rate. But he's OK to go on now. Pike with the corner. Gallagher going in for the header. And it was as well for Spurs that O'Reilly was there. And there's no doubt that Gallagher and Martin are presenting quite a big threat to uh, Spurs' defence from these corners. Chip through and offside. Alvin Martin it was who was offside. Back he goes to look after Garth Crooks. Stewart with the header away. Hoddle trying to make it contact, but here's Devonshire. Well played there by Perryman. Play again by Archibald and a nice touch by Villa. Now huddle onto the left boot. Then just wide. It's a couple of well, almost 30 yard shots he's whipped in. A half volley that went just wide of the right hand post. And that one that saw just wide of the left hand post as Hoddle was looking at it. That time. Another free kick to West Ham, leading by a goal to nil, wide on half time. Frank and Devonshire behind it. Frank, the West Ham skipper today. And twice with his header helped on by Oral, but Devonshire once more for West Ham. Being pushed into that touchline position by Avia, who just prevented the ball from going for the corner. Time added on, and there can't be a lot of it. Devonshire with the throw for West Ham. A half time whistle, and the first half it was brought alive after 25 minutes with a goal by the 17 year old Tony Potty. After Gallagher's header had hit the crossbar, he was there directing a good downward header into the back of the Spurs net. So half-time then here at Upton Park is West Ham 1, Tottenham Hotspur 0. Half now attacking the goal to our left in white. And in fact they've not scored in their last seven away games in the league. And that clearly is a record that they need to put right this afternoon. They're down by that goal scored by Tony Cotty. Via and Devonshire. And now Van der Elst. And now here's Allen. The free kick then to West Ham. It's a kick, uh, free kick which Jeff Pike will take. Clark poised in that Tottenham penalty area. Martin's in there as well. Here. Finding Brook. Made for Steve Archibald. And now here's Villa again. In once more for Archibald. And Brook hitting it well. And was that pushed away by Fox? Spurs thought so. The referee looked hard at the linesman who was hardly in the best place to see it. The referee must have had a better view of it. Certainly the impression I got was that Parks did uh, just push that away. The referee making an explanation there to Gary Brook, whose shot it was.
must have been a handball as he did so because it's a free kick for West Ham. What can they produce from this? Is the wall tense, waiting and wondering what's going to happen? Van der Els playing it now for Pike. Struck it well! captain for the day. Billy Bonds, of course, is the normal captain. Frank Lampard, the deputy captain, both out. And Mike very nearly getting on the score sheet. Times now when Spurs are pushing four men right forward. Archibald and Crooks supported by Villa and Gary Brook in an effort to pull back this one-goal deficit. Fairly by Price as Hoddle gets it back to Clements. It's Gary O'Reilly, Perryman wanting it, directing everything now from the centre of Tottenham's midfield. Here, Archibald, Perryman, here, Archibald. Again, the Argentine. Change from Ray Stewart though. And then finds Hoddle. And in turn finds Devonshire dogging him all the way. Hewton getting in there! And very nearly getting it home. What a great little dart in there by the Tottenham fullback Chris Hewton. There seemed to be so little danger as Hoddle hit that ball. And suddenly, as it flicked off uh, Martin's head, I think it was, Hewton was in there and he got there first. This way. Clark. Now Pike trying to feed Devonshire on that far side once more. Oh, they're sticking with him. Devonshire brought down and what's he given a penalty? Oh, yes, he has. Well, it wasn't a very clear indication. So Ray Stewart, who has scored with penalties on each of West Ham's last three games, there was the incident. As Aston brings down Devonshire, and Ray Stewart, as Ray Clements will well know, likes to thunder the ball into the net. He scored in the last three games against uh, Watford, Swansea and Notts County. So, chance now for West Ham to get the cushion of a two-goal lead. It rests with the right boot of Ray Stewart, and Ray Clements is the man who will seek to stop him. Spurs. Remembering they've not scored in the last seven league games away from home. In that time they've conceded 14. That's two a game, which is what's happened again so far today. Brooks, Perryman. And the ball in the end turned back by Martin to Phil Parks. Just at a time really when you felt that Spurs were getting back into it and were capable of pulling it back to 1-1. The referee well, he wasn't very positive in his uh, signal. Clearly had no doubts whatsoever. He marched firmly to the spot. Now Dickens. That's not a bad ball, but Van der Elst is offside. Well, that's a stupid thing for Van der Elst to do, and he'll be booked for that. 
kicking himself for that. It was totally unnecessary. The uh, ball had been placed by Gary O'Reilly, and the referee really had no option. The throw to West Ham, and just as Spurs seem to be taking the initiative uh, just before that second goal, so it seems that West Ham are in the ascendancy again now. to go, Potty again for West Ham, getting it wide of Hoddle and finding Devonshire. Here's the ball now for Pike. 3 0! What a good goal! Superbly worked. And now Spurs are dead. Played beautifully there for Pike. Just inside the far post. <laughs> Jeff Pike notches up his fourth of the season. Seems to enjoy doing it whenever the television cameras are around. We've seen one or two very good ones from him over the last two or three years. And they were certainly very well taken. Merriman there by Hoddle towards Gary Brook and Spurs fail to pull one back. Allen to Clark, timed that intervention fairly well and I think it might be trouble for Paul Price. Oh, for a moment the referee looked as though he was feeling for a book remembering that he had a word with Price in the first half but Simply a free kick to West Ham, which Pike will take. Towards Sandy Clark. Oh, Clements somehow just got a touch to push that against the crossbar. Could so easily have been the fourth. West Ham's throw. Well, the disconsolate Spurs manager, Keith Birkinshaw, his side three goals down. Hazard there, the man who was injured yesterday in training and couldn't play today. The second row. Nice. Bring it forward. Gallagher away. Via. And somehow epitomizes Spurs' performance today. A, a stumbling performance, particularly when. The going got really tough in the second half, but here they come again. Archibald. Hollow. Martin getting it away as far as Villa. Playing time added on now as Hugh takes it up for Tottenham. And driven well. And I'm not sure that he quite knew how he did it, but he stopped it nonetheless, Phil Parks. The referee getting in the way a little bit there. West Ham are not out of the wood by any means yet, but now they are, as the final whistle goes. A fine victory for West Ham, two of the goals, Stuart a penalty and Jeff Pike, but there's no doubt that this young man, 17-year-old Tony Cotty, who got West Ham on the way with that opening goal after Gallagher's header had hit the crossbar. What a day for him, his first league game, and a goal in it. Looking in the crowd, no doubt, to see if friends, maybe parents, who knows, are there. Well, we've seen him, and we've seen West Ham win. A final score. West Ham 3, Tottenham Hotspur 0. Of course, West Ham had every right to be happy with that result. Not so Spurs. It was a poor performance by them, and indeed their manager, Keith Birkinshaw, kept the Spurs players in their dressing room for an hour afterwards. And when he came out, Keith said, I've said some things in there that I don't want to repeat to you now. There's nothing more that I can say about that game. Well, what a contrast up that short West Ham corridor. And what a day for 17-year-old Tony Cotty, making his first appearance. Well, I stayed overnight at the hotel with the first team, but I didn't actually know until quarter to two this afternoon. And the manager called me into this office and said, you're playing, are you confident? And I said, yes. And he played me. And what did you really think then? I was very nervous to start off with, but once I got out on pitch, I was OK, I thought. Actually, I saw one or two of the senior players. I think Sandy Clark was having a word with you in the boot room and so on. What, what sort of things were they saying to you at this time? They were just saying, play your natural game and 
know, keep it easy and we'll help you and those sort of things. Were your mum and dad here today? Yes, they was here, but as I say, I, I didn't know till this afternoon, so I couldn't really tell all the people that I'd like to have been here. <laughs> that must have been a surprise for them to see you playing, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. They arrived and they obviously didn't know that I was playing. Did, have you seen them since the game? No, I haven't. No. Well, sitting alongside you is a man who's played many, many times for West Ham, Trevor Brooking, sadly out with injury. What did you think, first of all, of Tony, Trevor? Oh, terrific. I think, uh, you know, Tony, over the last season or two, when he first youth team and the reserves as well, when he's got the opportunity there, has got this knack of putting the ball in the net. And uh, although the chance when it came turned out to be relatively comfortable, in fact, uh, you know, it's the anticipation Tony showed in getting yes. in, into that position. And he has that habit of just finding those positions and he has a large percentage of them he tucks his away like he did today. As Trevor says, you have the knack of scoring goals. Somebody said you got 70 in all uh, competitions last season. Is that right? 55. It was. 55. Yeah. Someone exaggerated. But you've also got a few this season. I've got 30 this season. 30? Yeah. Would you like to see again, I'm sure you would, the one that really has set it all alight for you? Yeah, I would. The one today. Well, here we go. It was from the Jeff Pike free kick, wasn't it? Now, tell me what your thinking was here, uh, Tony. Well, I, I think I went to the near post and turn round and I think it's Joe Joe Gallagher who heads Very the ball Gallagher. and Ray just gets a touch onto the bar I think now what's your thought now and it just bounced just right for me you still had to get it down though didn't you yeah now we'll hold that loose doesn't it eh? <laughs> yeah. hey that's some moment that yeah it's a great feeling yeah what did you feel about the pace of it all I mean you uh, did you did you find it quite comfortable um, or not I was very tired after the goal because they couldn't catch me. <laughs> after that, I settled down a little bit, but towards the end, I got cramped in both my legs. But I found it okay. It wasn't as fast as I was, was expecting it to be. Yes. Have you always been a West Ham supporter? Yeah, I was. Well, I was born in West Ham, so ever since I can remember, I've been a West Ham supporter. But when we talk about the talent that's off the field, you're a part of that talent. Now, what exactly is the position with you and the possibility of coming back fairly soon? Uh, well, I've, I've just started some jogging. I mean, uh, really doing the, the two or three mile road runs just to build up my fitness <laughs> and stamina. A bit of a physical wreck at the end of those. But uh, at the end of the month, uh, I hope to be back towards full training. And really then, I think most of February is a hard slog getting the general fitness. I, I think you're looking to about six to eight weeks' time, really, realistically. To actually getting into a first team uh, well, situation? Well, to, to a game situation, yeah. yeah. So, uh, by the end of the season, certainly, it'll be all systems go. Yeah. Well, I hope the last, certainly to make the last few weeks of the season. Uh, although, I must say, sitting there today, I was getting a bit tired watching. <laughs> I hate to think what it had been like running around. <laughs> well, Spurs, in fact, signed the match ball for you, Tony. Uh, they've said maybe that we would like to present it to you. I'm sure that's going to get a place on your mantel shelf. And have you got a video at home as well? Too? Yes, I have. <laughs> You'll be taping the big match tonight, yeah. then? Yeah. Sure, it'll be the first of many, anyway. Let's hope so. And indeed, young Tony Cotty might well keep his place in the West Ham side at home to Luton on Tuesday. Paul Goddard. East Germany in midweek.